a lot of times people will come in and they'll ask in the course, they'll say to me, you know, what's the decision between a locator solution and a screw retained final solution? And the, the answer is uh, locators stink. I mean, they flat out stink. And, and I could be really, really making some enemies right now because this could be your bread and butter. This could be how you make your living. You know, you throw the two implant over denser in the lower, you rock on, it takes you two seconds to do it, and you're really happy, and that's your bread and butter. But I'm here to tell you, nobody wants a denture. Nobody. You might be able to convince them that a denture is a solution, but no one wants teeth to come in and out at night. Here, just run this by them. Before they decide to move forward, say, Mr. Smith, uh, you've agreed to the denture. I think that's lovely. But remember, right before you go to the bedroom with your wife, you have to pop your teeth out every night and put them in a jar. Okay, just remember that. Okay, that's it. The denture conversation's over. They're like, what? You know, I got to be intimate with my wife and I don't, I don't get to take my teeth to the bedroom? That's, that's right. You got to pop them out and put them in a jar. Nobody wants teeth to come in and out. It's not natural. It isn't how we were born. It isn't, how we, it isn't how we lived most of our life until we lost our teeth. It's not natural. So no one wants a denture. Now, we can convince them because historically, it was all we had. Back in the day, it was all we had. So then you say, well, what about an overdenture? What if we're going to take that denture, we're going to lock it down? Well, you still have the same concerns. It still pops in and out. It still has mobility, right? So you still have those concerns. And even more so, what I find is that with patients with overdentures, they have an ongoing fee. And that ongoing fee is the replacement cost associated with the little rubber grommets. And the little rubber grommets wear out. And when they wear out, they have to be replaced. And apparently, they're being made in a factory with the golden goose with the golden goose eggs because they're extremely expensive. And so when the patient comes in, and it doesn't matter really what it is, but if they have a couple of locators and you say, you've got to replace those again, and they just replace them, they get angry with you. And they go, hey, you know, how many more years am I going to have to be replaced? And this is for the rest of your life. This is the solution you chose. So I liken it to changing your oil, you know, or, or better yet, your windshield wipers on your car. And I say to the people who say, well, when do I know I need to replace my, my locator rubber grommets? And I said, you'll know because they're like your windshield wipers in your car. The, the minute you turn it on and it goes, and it jumps across your window and it doesn't work, you know you need to replace the rubber. But up until that point, you just let them run. So they go, okay, that makes sense. Well, how off, How long will it last? And I say, well, it depends on each individual person. Because I've had people leave and, they've, and they have been rough on their denture and placed it in their mouth and used the opposing dentition to close down on the denture and damage the housing within a week of getting new ones. And so, they, I mean, that's a big expense. They have to replace the housing and the rubber grommets within a week. And you do that a few times, you, you, you create someone who's not happy with you and or the industry. So that leads to the screw retain solution, which everyone wants. If you offered a screw retain solution and you said it was free, of all three options, a denture, a locator, and screw retain, and you said all three were free, I, I, I don't think there's a person on the planet that would choose anything but screw retain because it's the closest thing to nature. It's the closest thing to what we were born with. It's a third set of teeth, and it's a set of teeth that will never need a root canal. You'll never need a filling. It'll never need a deep cleaning. You know, a lot of the conditions that they've been suffering with go away when you place a screw retained solution. Now, it has to be done right because some people are saying, well, you can have complications with your full mouth. You, you sure can. But if you do it right, those complications are minimal to none. Okay. So when people say, well, would I be a candidate for locators? The litmus test in my opinion, is this. If they're a candidate for a denture, then locators will make it better. If they're really not a candidate for a denture, then locators aren't going to help much. So let me explain. If you have a patient who has a ridge that's nice and thick and, and full in volume, they're a candidate for a denture. The denture will work okay, okay? In that case, adding locators to that really helps a lot because it's, it's an additive effect. If you have a patient who has a lot of bone loss, so the bone is resorbed over time and it's rather flat on both the upper and lower, they're not a great candidate for a denture to start with. If you put locators in that person, they're probably gonna be at your doorstep every couple of weeks. They're gonna become one of these uh, family members. And they're always at the office and they're always complaining because they, the, the locators, people are expecting screw retained 
when they get locators. They're expecting the rigidity of a screw retain solution. And you tell them, I'm giving you implants. And it's not inexpensive, right? It's an investment. And then what happens is, is if you put that in someone who doesn't have a decent ridge to start with, they're angry because they're not getting what they thought they were going to get. You did everything right. The implants healed. The prosthesis is well done. The occlusion looks great. The aesthetics look great. But it doesn't matter. They're still not happy because they weren't a candidate for a denture in the first place. And the, impl and the locators aren't going to help that much. So if you have somebody with a lot of atrophy, I don't ever put them in a denture. I don't ever put them, I don't ever recommend a denture and or a, a locator solution. I tell them screw retained. And our goal in our office, and I, and I would encourage everyone out there to try to do this, is to do everything you can to drive the cost basis around screw retained down. Because if we can get the cost down on our screw retained solutions, it's what everyone wants. And it's a beautiful thing. It's just when you do screw retain all on X properly, it is a beautiful thing. It just, I, I firmly believe properly done all on X solutions are likely going to last the patient the rest of their life. That's not to say that you might not have some sort of complications some point down the road, but that, but those complications are usually minimal and can be fixed with a, with a, a simple appointment to the office. So screw retained is where I believe firmly most people want to go. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. Smile Engineer, out.